Welcome back to Message Crawler Video Manual. In this chapter, we're going to look at how we can copy files that are referenced by a dat file in Message Crawler. First question is, why would you need to copy files? Well, you may have a fairly sizable export of forensic data, and you only want to separate out portion of the data and put it to a separate folder, maybe with its own dat file, and send that as a deliverable to a client. You can do the same thing by exporting to a CSV and again, only including relevant native files where you don't want to include absolutely all the native files. The other reason, sometimes data from forensic team comes in a million different folders and subfolders and super long paths and using this operation will allow us to rename files by control number and making everything nice, clean and organized that could be presented to a client in a much better way. So let's switch to my computer and load a dat file. I'm going to import the dat and I'm going to select some text messages. And what I have here is a number of attachments that my dat file references. So I can pretend that I want to make a deliverable of just conversation number one. So. I'm going to filter for conversation one, close this, and now I need to copy these native files from their deep paths, wherever they exist, to a new folder structure, uh, numbering it by control number, so everything looks nice and organized. I'm going to go to export, and we'll select export copy native files for attachment. Again, a tool doesn't necessarily care whether it's attachment or a message, as long as path for that um, file exists. So we're going to select field with path, which is going to be attachment path. Uh, we may need to specify path prefix. So you see this is a relational path. We don't have a drive letter or UNC. A message crawler automatically knows where it got that file from. So it has this information stored. But if it changes for some reason, uh, you can point to a different set of data. Now, where are we going to export it to? We'll just go into export it to a blank export folder here. How do we want to name our files? We're going to use control number. Uh, you definitely don't want to use any fields that repeat like a group identifier, otherwise files will just override themselves. We can specify how many files per folder just so we don't uh, have too many files per folder. And what is the destination path where we want to write this to? And I'm sorry, the copy status, this will indicate where file copied successfully or failed, our destination path field. And if we want to use full or relative paths, again, it's up to you. I'm going to use a relative path for this case. I am going to select copy files and this will copy seven files. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Click OK. And now if we scroll to the right, we see our copy status. Whether it's done or there are any errors, you can click here to check for errors. And we have our new path here. So if we move it over here, we have a path folder 001. And then we have a file name that matches control number. Let's go to the actual folder here and we can see it is exact same thing and we can do by list. So we matched our file names to control numbers instead of whatever crazy names they were assigned before that. So now that we have data copied over, we can go to export that file and we can uncheck our attachment path and we can include a new path field and generate a dat file that points uh, to our newly copied files. And it is only going to contain data from conversation one. So using this tool, we were able to filter out by a subset of data, copy all the attachments to a new folder structure and export a new dat file to match that subset. And this will of course create much neater, uh, more organized deliverable to a client. All right, that's it for this chapter of Message Crawler Video Manual. I will see you in the next chapter. Thank you for watching.